Good afternoon, and welcome to the U.S. Army's first Twitter Spaces of 2023, Financial Readiness and Planning for the New Year. I'm your host, Sergeant Lawrence Holmes, with the Office of the Chief of Public Affairs. Today, I'm joined by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission's Chair, Honorable Gary Gensler, sworn into office as the 33rd Chair on April 17, 2021, and the SEC's Commissioner, Caroline Crenshaw, the Honorable Caroline Crenshaw, who was sworn into office as Commissioner of the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission on August 17, 2020. Commissioner, Chair, thank you so much for joining us. It's terrific. It's an honor to be with you. Thanks for having us. You're very welcome. So we're going to kind of get things started here. And um, with the start of the new year, uh, I know a lot of soldiers are making resolutions uh, that include things like financial plans to help meet financial goals successfully for the year, as well as well into the future. And January is certainly a time to jumpstart financial readiness. And so that's exactly what we're going to be discussing, financial planning for these soldiers and their families. So I want to ask you a few questions uh, to both of you as it pertains to financial financial decisions and decision making. So, uh, Chair Gensler, this first question is going to be for you. Uh, so many soldiers make resolutions to improve themselves in the new year. What are your thoughts on how they and their families can improve their financial readiness and build wealth uh, well into 2023? Um, thank you. Um, okay, if you haven't already, what I would say, what's really important is to begin saving and to think of it as a journey. I know it's it's probably not as satisfying as thinking about, can I become a millionaire tomorrow or in a month? But it's really a long journey. And, um, and just think about it this way. If you put $200 aside every month when you're 18 and you think, all right, what, what happens if I do that for 40 years? You've actually, the, the math is easy to figure out. You've, you've actually put... Uh, with the returns, like if you put it in the government's thrift savings plan, 40 years later, you'll have about a half a million dollars. But you will have only put actually $96,000 in. That's 200 a month for, for the 40 years. It's, it's the slow and steady. You might say, and this is probably hard uh, uh, to think through, it's the slow and steady tortoise wins this race. Yeah, and, and bottom line is I, I think the one thing a lot of us are always looking forward to is I want to see my money grow. I want to see it grow quick. But uh, I know personally I've been victim to that, wanting to see it grow quick. But you have to stay consistent, I would say, correct? I'd say that. But also if I might add something is if, if you see an advertisement for a yield and it looks too good to be true, it probably is. You know, whether that's in crypto, whether that's in some other fields, uh, and to be careful about that as well. All right. Good. And thank you for that. That's, that's great information. So take it slow, take it steady, and watch your money grow. So next question is going to be for Commissioner Crenshaw. Now, Commissioner Crenshaw, I'm going to give you a tough one. This is a three-parter. So first part. Why do you think so many people say that the thrift savings plan is the first building block for creating wealth? All right. Um, you know, I think um, the thrift saving plan is the workplace 401k, uh, you know, whether you're a federal employee, whether you're active duty military, or even, frankly, for uh, reservists in some circumstances. As I am a reservist, I'm, I'm uh, familiar with this, actually. So, um, uh, so sometimes we call our Captain Crenshaw. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, so I think there, there are two big advantages to contributing to uh, the TSP. And, and I think this is why they're considered a critical building block for investing. And, and first are the tax consequences or the tax break uh, that you can get when making a contribution to a TSP. Now, the type of tax break depends a little bit on whether you contribute uh, to uh, a traditional or a Roth TSP. So okay. when you make a contribution to a, uh, a traditional contribution, you lower your taxable income this year. So you, you pay lower taxes this year. And then later in retirement, uh, you will pay taxes when you withdraw the money. So that, that's one option. You can also contribute to uh, your Roth TSP. 
And that's okay. why you make a strategic decision to pay the tax contribution this year, right now, uh, in exchange for tax-free withdrawal in retirement. Uh, okay. And so folks who choose Roth might be taking advantage of a, a relatively lower uh, pay uh, at this right at this moment right now um, and a lower tax burden earlier in the careers, or they might be taking, making a strategic decision that they can afford it now and don't want to have to risk paying the taxes uh, upon retirement. But either way, the tax rate is, is really an important uh, benefit of investing in the TSP versus buying a few stocks or some crypto assets with, say, uh, an online brokerage account like Robinhood or Fidelity, where you typically get no tax rate at all and may have to pay higher taxes, uh, potentially, if you earn some short-term profits. So that's one. The, the second, sort of a long answer to your question, um, the, the second big advantage of the TSP is that the government will match your contributions in the military up to 5%. So. Okay. For anyone in the blended retirement system, um, so for ser service members who opted into the blended retirement system, or for all service members who joined in 2018 who are uh, automatically put into the blended retirement program, um, if you're in that, um, you know you want to make sure you get that that five percent match, and that match will let you grow your money significantly faster. It's sort of like building a house every every time you add a brick it's like this other brick just shows up too um, and so so if possible you want to make sure you're contributing as much as possible the five percent might be too much um, but but you want to make sure you're contributing as much as possible at the if you can't do the five percent at the very least uh, contribute what you can so you're you, you can get that free money Okay, that makes sense. And and I would also say, kind of to your point earlier, just uh, obviously understanding your individual situation so you can make the best financial decision. So maybe, like you said, 5% is too little for some, and maybe you might want to do a little bit more or you need to do less. But evaluating your financial situation so you can obviously make sure you're maximizing that rate of return, correct? Exactly. You want to you want to maximize it actually as much as possible, um, but you'll get at least the, the five percent match if you're doing that much. Um, but again, you just want to do as, as much as, as much as you can to try to get that that free money. OK, cool. All right. Now, one other piece to this, uh, another advantage of TSP is also said to be diversification. What is that exactly? And why does it, why is it important to have a diversified portfolio? So. Um... It really comes down to this. It's it's trying not to put all your eggs in one basket. And and I'm sure you can think about it even in the military this way. I mean, you have diverse diversification in a platoon or diversity, if you wish, in a platoon. And, and you don't go into battle just with one uh, type of uh, weapon either, probably. I'm sorry if I'm making the analogies and, and they're wrong because... <laughs> I mean, is actually the reservist, and I didn't have the honor of serving. But diversification basically comes down to that, not having all your eggs in one basket. Financial economists decades ago really saw the benefit of diversification, and if it's using those bricks in that house, it's making sure that it's not uh, all uh, what one might call a monoculture, that it's all the same. And if you think, well, I'm really set on, I really believe tech stocks are going to do well for the next 20 years, that you might be right. That's more risk and right. might, be, might be more reward, but it also runs the risk that what if other sectors, not tech sector in that example, uh, do better. I want to say one other thing that you, wasn't in your question is about – this remarkable thing about math, and I was a bit of a math geek as a kid, but it's just the compounding that year after year, if you start early and you put that $200 a month away, you get that free money that Commissioner Crenshaw talked about, the 5% match, and you, you put that away and you just don't touch it. There'll be temptations all along the way to touch it. Yes. There'll be, there'll be <laughs> life events and the inevitable bumps along the, the road, and you'll be buying a house, uh, take, taking out a mortgage, a car, a marriage, kids. But the more you're able to look at the long term, be kind of the Rip Van Winkle of investing, um, and uh, try, try to look past the dips and doodles in the markets, um, 
there's a lot of academic studies that show that uh, people that try to time markets usually do worse because they tend, as of human nature, to sell to sell when things are going down and they're kind of in the valleys, mm-hmm. and, and they chase markets near the peak. That's just human nature, and uh, it's better to be like a Rip Van Winkle of investing. Okay, and I, I can definitely speak to that. Um, you know, seeing seeing things where it's like, oh man, I need to, you know, I need to pull some money out right now because something's hard, and I, I'm guilty of that. Um, but my father always told me, pay yourself first, put ten percent of your paycheck, pay yourself first, put it in savings, um, and just let it sit and let it grow. So uh, I definitely think that's a that's a great strategy. Take that time to pay yourself first um, so you can reap the benefits, bottom line. So, Commissioner Crenshaw, I want, I want to get back to you on this. Um, I think um, uh, Chair Gensler was talking about this, but is it true that somebody can actually become a millionaire through TSP? So, uh, the, the long and short of it is... Um uh, there are, I think, more than 65,000 millionaires in the TSP. Uh, those are folks uh, with an account balance over a million dollars at the end of fiscal year 2022. Uh, and they, they didn't get there from rock star mega salaries um, or corporate CEO pay packages. Uh, because just to reiterate, the, the TSP is for government and employees and, and military. Um, and so th- there is this way to get there. It's what we've been talking about. It's what you just highlighted, um, you know, steady contributions over a long period of time. Um, and and many TSP millionaires did start contributing at the uh, beginning of their careers. Um, so, again, just the, you know, invest early as you can. Start now. It's never too late to start. Um, take advantage of the match, as we've talked about, um, be as aggressive as you can. Um, so we, we talked about the 5% match, but as of 2023, you actually can invest up to $22,500. Um, so if that's, that's a lot of money. Uh, and obviously not, um, not everyone can contribute near that much, but again, just as much as you can. And again, as Chair Gensler said, whether the markets are up or down, um, in fact, when the markets are down, the regular contributions acquire more shares, uh, and that leaves you poised to create wealth when the market rebounds. Um, so, so again, just contribute throughout your career. Um, figure out the the strategy that makes the most sense for you. There are these life cycle funds the TSP does, so that they they allocate the risk for you. Riskier um, when you're further out from retirement, less risky when you're at retirement. Um, but it's not overnight riches. It's a tried and true formula that's consistent contributions plus this. Um, uh, you know, important, important superpower of time. Right. And we were talking about um, time and specifically when to get started. So this is actually a, a great segue over to Chair Gensler. Uh, Chair Gensler, for soldiers and family members that are getting started late, because, you know, uh, uh, Commissioner Crenshaw was just kind of speaking about getting started. So if you're getting started late to saving and investing, should they just say, you know what, it's too late, I, I'm never going to make it, there's no point? What would you recommend? It's never too late to start. Um, I would say that beyond investing. I would say that uh, for so many things in life, whether it's that you wanted to learn how to be a better cook or you wanted to, you know, <laughs> you know, you've gotten a little out of shape and you want to be a better runner, it's just it's never too late. I, I, I say that as a 65-year-old. So, um, But I would also say just about the math. Um, you know, if, if you do find that you're you're uh, getting up in the years and you've been in the military a while, it might be that you want to make sure that those first years you're going in, put a little extra in if, if you can afford it, if you can mm-hmm. afford it, of course. And, right. um, and one thing you haven't asked yet is, and we're not just an advertisement for the Thrift Savings Plan, you, you should feel free to think about other opportunities as well, but think about low expenses. Remember, the financial services industry, while they are advertising to you to be on your side, they are trying to make money for that brokerage firm, for their shareholders, and so forth. And, and so something that benefits you is the lowest cost 
financial services like the thrift savings plan and it comes through these what's called diversified index funds and okay. um, whether it's with the thrift saving plan whether it's elsewhere remember um, that a lot of people marketing to you are trying to uh, take some of your hard-earned dollars and put it into their bank account instead of your bank account right okay. that's, that's that's fees that's expenses and that's even, unfortunately, sometimes fraudsters and scammers. Yeah, so do your research. Uh, you know, truly look into all of the opportunities that you have. And, and uh, Chair Gensler, you kind of hit on this as we were getting ready to move on to another great segue when we're talking about uh, the types of investments that are out there. And you guys have both spoken about this earlier because there are soldiers that look for those alternative investments. And obviously you mentioned this crypto assets and there's been a lot of, you know, talk in the media these days about crypto. So what are the risks to investing in crypto? So I, I think it's important to understand that the uh, crypto assets have significant risk. Um, and it's important if you choose to invest in crypto that you understand them. And I, I have to say, I was at the Master Fitness Trainer course in 2018, and this was a hot topic then. Uh, so many folks at that course um, were interested in crypto and were making money. Um, and they were making money, so they were encouraging others to get in. Um, and it was exactly as Chair Gensler was saying earlier, they were chasing chasing the market. It was it was right. going up. It was high. Um, but it's important to understand that the crypto is is novel. Um, it's speculative. Uh, there are um, really, really reduced investor protections because most of them have, have not chosen to come under the SEC remit. So they're, they're outside right now uh, of, of our traditional fundamentally important protections. Um, they're noted for their scams and they claim to be transparent. Um, but when in fact, you know, what's on the blockchain is transparent, but the rest of what's there is, is, is not transparent. And I think there's some, been some examples of that recently, but, but bottom line is there's increased risk when you invest in these novel, speculative, volatile investments that really lack basic protections and regulations. So if you're considering investing in crypto, give careful, careful consideration to how much of your portfolio you devote to it, and certainly no more than you can afford to lose. And, and make sure that you are doing the basic building blocks of investing first, like a 401k plan or a thrift saving plan, uh, the types of investments that have tax advantages and offer employee matches. Now, now I would say that Commissioner Crenshaw said it so well, and you don't need to hear from two people, but this one I'm going to give you two, because highly speculative volatile asset class, um, I, I would say the reason they're currently, as Commissioner Crenshaw said, some of them are not under the remit is that's because of non-compliance. Most of these, mm -hmm. that again, are not complying with the securities laws, uh, but they should be. <laughs> they should yeah. be. It's the Wild West. And what's more is I'd say you have to really wonder, what is the there there? Most of these 10 or 15,000 tokens will fail. Um, that's because venture capital fails, new startups fail, but also because history tells us that there's not much room for micro currencies. And uh, meaning, you know, we have the U.S. dollar and Europe has the euro and the like. So... Um, don't get caught up in, in the FOMO, the fear of missing out. Uh, please don't get caught up in that. This is highly speculative, non-compliant generally, and question whether there's a real there there. And, you, and the bottom line is it, it go, everything goes back to what we've been talking about, the long game. Doing things the slow and steady way. I mean, crypto came about and kind of exploded and everyone was so excited, like, oh, look at this. And, and yes, and Bitcoin was huge and, and a lot of people did very well. But I think it really speaks to what you were speaking about earlier, uh, Commissioner Crenshaw and Chair Gensler, just let's do this the, the long way. So now speaking of a lot of these investments, this is a good this is a good question that I think a lot of people want to know. How can you tell if an investment really is a scam? And if if you think it is, what steps can soldiers take 
to protect themselves from bogus investments? It's a really excellent question. Uh, I said it in a colloquial way earlier. If something looks too good to be true, sometimes it really is. But there, there are certain red flags uh, that you can look for um, uh, beyond it being too good to be true uh, mm-hmm. as well. And so before investing your hard-earned money, you, you really want to understand what it is. And, and you're, the listeners of this call, you're in the U.S. Uh, military. You're smart enough to get in the U.S. military. You, if somebody's explaining something and you don't understand it, slow them down and say, wait a minute. What's the company? What's the real estate? What's the opportunity? And ask them for some documentation if there's any paperwork and disclosure. And the less paperwork or disclosure you have, more likely there's something going on. And always remember, there's there's risk associated when somebody says there's a high return. You know, if a if a bank account can get you a certain amount, or a thrift savings plan can get you a certain amount, and somebody's offering you something more, even the good faith investment. One that you might take, it does mean that there's additional risk. Now, and also never be pressured into a quick decision. Um, okay. it, that's just, now, you, you know, there's some opportunities you might miss, but I bet you there's a lot more things that you'll protect yourself in, uh, you know, gift card scams, affinity fraud, which sometimes looks to various communities in our great diverse nation and, and tries to uh, tell you uh, something that they have an inside track. And if somebody says they have inside information on something, that's actually legal to trade on. So it's probably a scam right there. Now, how to protect yourself? There's a lot of places you can go to, to uh, our website, something called investor.gov, which is uh, a, a good place to uh, see things. Also, you can go to the databases if you're looking at Public companies at secsinvestor.gov. You can look at individual public companies. Uh, you can look at other databases at the Securities and Exchange Commission or even the self regulatory organization, FINRA. And lastly, if you see something and you want to report it, we take tips, complaints, and referrals and have a pretty active whistleblower program. If you know something and we open an investigation and pursue it and there's something there, you can actually. Um, uh, uh, get 10 to 30 percent of whatever penalties or disgorgement that would come afterwards. Okay. And, uh, you know, you mentioned, and, and thank you for that. That's, that's great information. And uh, one of the things I know my wife does is she researches. She uh, is always looking into things to ensure that, oh, hey, did what we just hear, or is this too good to be true, as you said before. So I think the bottom line is it always comes down to research. And one thing I do, do want to make sure I touched on, and you said a key word that uh, tipped it off for me. You mentioned uh, debit cards, and I think you mentioned uh, gift cards. Soldiers have credit cards, and they have credit card debt, and some of them have little to no savings. So, Commissioner Crenshaw, this one's for you. What's the best way for soldiers and their families to address that? Yeah, so so I actually teach the consumer financial protection classes at the JAG school for the for the U.S. Army. So this is a question near and dear to my heart because we address some of these protections uh, a lot in the you know the SCRA protections. But uh, to answer your specific question, um, you know, first and foremost, pay down your high interest debt. Your high interest debt is going to cost you more than you can get in interest in the market, um, and, and it can snowball in the other direction. Uh, so you really want to make sure that the thing you're doing first and foremost is is paying down that high interest debt. If you can't afford to pay off your credit card bill at the end of the each month, you're going to end up paying substantial interest to the bank or to the credit card company. And you're going to keep doing that until it's paid off. Um, so, so that's something you really want to avoid. Um, so be sure to pay it down aggressively. Um, pay more than the minimum each month mm-hmm. if you can. Yes. Uh, Really, really strive to live within your means without relying on on credit cards. Um, only try to charge what you can uh, afford to pay off each month. Um, and, and and once you pay down that high interest debt, 
you can uh, start sort of the next step, um, which I think all this is really fundamental. We've been we've been talking about invest what you can, but these are really critical first steps. Um, so so pay down that high interest uh, debt and then start a small emergency fund. Chair Gensler mentioned this. Um, you know, set up an automatic withdrawal every pay period from your bank or credit union to put some money in a rainy day fund uh, where you can build up a buffer. You mentioned this too. And the other thing to keep in mind is the Arm, uh, Arm, uh, Army's Emergency Relief Fund, um, where if you need some some uh, some assistance, uh, interest free, you can you can do that. So so that's that's an important benefit for our folks in the military to keep in mind. All right. Well, uh, Commissioner Crenshaw, thank you for that. And uh, we're getting close to the end of our time, so I want to make sure I give you both uh, some time for closing remarks. But I want to ask one final question uh, for. Um, uh, for Chair Gensler and Commissioner Crenshaw. So both of you, please uh, provide some feedback. And then, of course, I want to give the floor to you for any final comments. But the question for both of you, are there free resources that soldiers and their families can take advantage of to be more informed investors? Um, there, there are. There are at the SEC, as I mentioned earlier, at sec.gov and investor.gov. I think there are at, at the, uh, Department of Defense also, if I didn't mention it earlier, but I think, um, and if you're trying to protect yourself, uh, DOD's FINRAD and mill spouse, is, it, is yep. that accurate? Yep. Um, there's certainly ways to report things. Um, I know that the military also, it's, it's a little bit different around finance, but about taxes, there's the military one source is um, mill tax, and there's ways to help you uh, you know, sort through all of those um, challenges. You know, no, none of us like going to the dentist and none of us like paying taxes. I get that. Um, but uh, other resources? Yep. Just uh, I would highlight on investor.gov that we have a specific military page on investor.gov. Um, so so you can go directly to there. It's easy to find on the investor.gov um, uh, homepage. Um, we also have a page that talks about saving and investing for military personnel with a cool tool that you can put in various amounts right now that you contribute and see sort of what it might look like in a couple years. Um, so I would add that. There's also the, the Army Community Service Offices, the ACS. There's the PFMs, your personal financial managers, um, the personal financial counselors. Those are free resources to you. Um, Military One Source uh, is another one. Um, uh, so I think those are all things to, to, to keep in mind um, and, and our resources for, for our military folks. All right. Well, I would definitely... Uh, like to thank you both, uh, Honorable Chair Gensler and uh, Honorable Commissioner uh, Caroline Crenshaw, uh, for today's discussion. It has been extremely informative. Uh, I want to thank you both for being with us. I definitely want to remind our listeners, make sure you check out Investor.gov. Also, go to the SEC homepage, SEC.gov. Uh, I think, Chair Gensler, you mentioned FINRA. That's FINRA.org. And, of course, you know, you have ACS and other resources. So, um, ma'am, sir, thank you again so very much. Uh, any final comments before we close things out from either of you? Well, I just want to thank you for your service. I mean, those of you who uh, train in the military, serve in the military, and protect our nation and help us all sleep well at night, um, it's a remarkable thing that you do, and um, uh, I, I just can't thank you enough for that service. It's an honor to sit here, not just with Commissioner Crenshaw, but Captain Crenshaw. I'm always <laughs> amazed by this remarkable uh, uh, public servants service that we get to share with the military. Um, uh, and then in terms of investing, um, uh, uh, you, you already heard me. It's a little bit Rip Van Winkle. The t tortoise usually does better than the hare. Uh, I know that's hard to think through when you're, you, particularly if you're young in the military and, and you might have a little bit more, let's say, incentives and personalities towards <laughs> running that race faster. Um, but low cost, diversified, steady to go investing. Um, pays off when you need those funds later in times of uh, when you're not working. Right. Right. Commissioner? Um, I'll just add that it's, it, it can 
seem daunting and there can be a lot of questions, um, whether it's a consumer financial question about door-to-door salesmen um, uh, and something you've gotten a bind there, or whether it's about investing um, and figuring out whether or not your, your broker is actually registered, which is another tool Investor.gov uh, comes in handy for, um, see if your broker is actually registered. But whatever it is, it can seem daunting. But um, you know, I think just just keeping in mind that this is so fundamentally important. It may not seem mission critical as a as a young person with a lot of time, but it really does become mission critical. It does become mission critical uh, for for the individual and for the whole command when there's when there's debt. So just pay down that I interest debt and really really as 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 little each month as you can um, focus on that uh, paying down that that. Debt, um, putting away that emergency fund, and then looking to, to, to build your uh, nest egg with just slow and steady uh, over time with, with as much as you can contribute. Awesome. Well, say Chair Gensler, Commissioner Crenshaw, once again, thank you very much. Great, great feedback. Great uh, information. I hope everyone listening today uh, got plenty of helpful financial advice for 2023 and beyond. I want to thank the Security Exchange Commission Chair, the Honorable Gary Gensler, and of course the Commissioner, the Honorable Caroline Crenshaw, for their discussion today. Once again, please do not forget investor.gov, sec.gov, and finra.org, some of the um, uh, tools that you can utilize to help yourself with your financial planning. Once again, everyone, thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful day and happy financial planning.